All right, what's going on, everybody? Back again today to do another video talking about something that has uh, become important to me rather recently, uh, and that is He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Uh, I got into this about, I don't know, it's been a few months now. It was kind of like towards the end of this past summer. Uh, I watched the Power of Grey Skull documentary on Netflix. And it got me hooked with He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. This, I've said in other videos talking about He-Man, this is not something that I ever expected to be into. But I totally am now. I've collected a, a number of the Masters of the Universe classics figures. I've got the Character Guide World Compendium. I've got the Mini Comics Collection. I've got the DC Comics Omnibus. And yeah, I'm in. I've watched the... Uh, I cannot bring myself to watch the Filmation show. I've tried, but it's just so outdated and corny and cheesy. I just can't. I can't watch it for very long. I did go back and watch the Mike Young Productions uh, reboot animated series from 2002. That is still a really good series, and I, if you ask me, it holds up to this day. However, there is a problem with He-Man. He has an image problem, and it's something that I hope to address in this video because... It looks like Mattel and just everyone who, I, I mean specifically Mattel, I guess, because it's their property, they're going to try and do a comeback for He-Man in the near future. There are going to be two new animated properties on Netflix. Uh, one is going to be a more family-oriented show, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, and then another, the other one's going to be Masters of the Universe Revelation, which is being done by Kevin Smith. And that's going to be a more adult-oriented anime-style He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And that is actually meant to continue on from the Filmation series and actually kind of end it. Like, give us the conclusion for that series that we never got. Uh, kind of what they did with Samurai Jack. A little bit different, though. So with them trying to give He-Man a comeback... I felt like there's an issue that needs to be addressed, and that is his image. He-Man has an image problem. So before we get any further into this, we have to give you a little bit of story of where He-Man and his look, his image, came from. So the early mini-comics that were packaged with the, the toys, uh, they depicted He-Man as this kind of like barbarian from this barbarian tribe who just left his tribe one day to go off and seek adventure. And he ended up running into this lady who is the sorceress. And she holds like ancient knowledge and secrets of the world and whatnot. And she was looking for someone to be like the champion and the protector, stand up for good and righteousness and all that. And she gave He-Man uh, armor and weapons and stuff and technology uh, that would help him in his battle against evil and help him be a champion for good. So right off the bat, you can see here that he was just this pretty much naked barbarian from this tribe. I mean, he wore a fur loincloth, but that was it. And then she hooked him up with the, the harness and the boots and other weapons and stuff. So that's where his initial look came from. And here's two pretty good examples of He-Man's original look. And this look has held true for the most part throughout his entire existence since the early 80s. Now, if you watch any documentaries, I mean, there's The Power of Grayskull on Netflix, and there's also an episode of The Toys That Made Us that talk about He-Man and how he was designed. And a lot of what played into his design was male masculinity. And I guess back in the 80s, early 80s, you know, stuff like this seemed cool, like the more raw, naked muscle on a dude that you could see made him seem more badass. But that might have flown in the 1980s, but it doesn't really fly anymore. Like, if we take, if we really look here at He-Man, you know, the battle harness is the battle harness. We've seen people, characters in fiction, wear stuff like this all the time. Martian Manhunter wears something similar. What really does it is the furry Speedos. And like we can, call, you can call it a loincloth if you want to, but it's just so like perfectly tailored and whatnot that it's it's furry speedos. And let's be honest, in the year and day and age that we're in right now, about to be 2021, if you were at like a public pool and some really just like tan, long, some tan, muscular, beefy, ripped, muscular dude 
with flowing blonde hair just like stood up at the pool and like declothed down to just a pair of like brown speedos you'd kind of be like what is this dude's deal like this is not the norm you know it's it's just a little it's not the thing anymore you know what i mean like that's just naked mass naked male physique is not like it's not cool. Like it, sh- it can be sexy, I guess. Like we all know that in like the superhero movies, they always try to like shoehorn a shirtless scene in for all the main actors showing off the incredible shape that they're in. But that's not coolness. That's sex appeal. Like they're not throwing that in there to make people go like, oh man, look how badass his muscles are. No, that's thrown in there. It's 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 sex appeal. That's all it is. And. This being a children's toy, He-Man being a children's toy at the end of the day, uh, are you really trying to market sex appeal to children? Because if not, then this is not the look you want to go for anymore with He-Man. Now, how do I put this? Uh, Let's see here. These are a couple examples of toys from He-Man. So this is this is the toy line we have now. And it's Masters of the Universe Origins. And this is the toy line we had right before it, Masters of the Universe Classics. This, I can kind of barely accept like this. This is definitely, you know, it's walking the line between tight Speedos and a loincloth. This over here, on the other hand, is just straight up the skimpiest tight pair of Speedos you could possibly put on a male figure who's already naked pretty much and with them trying to do a big comeback for he-man one of the things that's going to have to happen is kids are going to have to latch onto this property again they're going to want to have to buy the toys read the comics watch the cartoons and that's not going to happen if the main character just doesn't appeal to them and you know i don't think mattel did this to you know make him look that way i think they did it to be cheap you know this whole like hip area was going to be a part of the figure no matter what because it's where you connect the legs to and then i guess they just thought all right we'll just sculpt and paint that to be his loincloth because otherwise we're gonna have to make a whole separate piece like we did on this guy so i think that was more an effort to be cheap rather than to have it look like overly sexualized (laughs) but you can't deny like in this day and age this is not like cool this is sexual you know that's just the fact of the matter uh and there's so there's that reason why this doesn't work anymore another reason being is once the toy line took off and they were going to do uh the filmation animated series they went back and they revamped the entire origin of he-man and the masters of the universe to where he was Adam, he was a prince, he was the son of the king, this is the king right here, his dad, uh, King Randor, his mom was the queen, obviously, Uh, there were, they redid the whole thing to where Eternia and the world that he lives in is this more advanced society, there's kings and queens and there's royal guards of the palace and there's advanced technology mixed within sorcery, and amongst all that, they actually gave quite a few characters pants and like clothing like you can see here his dad is wearing armor he's fully clothed uh even in the filmation series man of man at arms is wearing armor and he's got pants uh the Eternian guard which are these people that's what like man of arms kind of commands they've all got on like cool almost sci-fi armor and they're wearing pants they're wearing loincloths on top of their pants i don't know why that is but they're wearing they're wearing they're fully clothed so uh, even some of the villains like Count Marzo, he's wearing armor and a cape and pants. So once they did this, once they went back and they revamped the origin of He-Man for the filmation show, the whole barbarian loincloth look still kind of seemed out of place, you know? And you might be wondering like, okay, why why is it that just because these guys have pants, He-Man can't look the way he's always looked. Well, it's because of this exact reason. It doesn't fit within the setting, you know? There have been other instances uh, throughout different forms of entertainment where characters are not very well clothed, but it fits within the setting. Like, no one thought... Like, Kratos from God of War, uh, he's pretty much like shirtless and not wearing a whole lot throughout most of the God of War games, but no one thought that that was like overly sexualized you know they thought okay it's ancient 
it's ancient Greek mythology, you know, it's not, armor and stuff isn't developed yet to the point of, like, uh, like, full plate mail from, like, medieval times, they, so this fits. In 300, like, yeah, there's a ton of, like, half-naked dudes running around, but no one thought of it as, like, it was intentionally being sexual, like, it wasn't trying to, like, inject sexuality it was just ancient Greece, and this is what they had at that point in time. People just kind of like, all right, ancient Greece. You know, there's there's no plate armor yet; it hasn't been invented. They've got this is just what they have to work with. This is their deal, ancient Greece. It fit with the setting. It fit with the story in both of these examples, and that's why it works there. But like I said, once they redefined He-Man's origin story to be more of like this science fantasy medieval territory, where like area universe where multiple people are wearing full sets of armor and they're fully clothed and a lot of them have pants. Once you did that, it did not really make sense anymore. You can go and watch some of uh, Scott Knightlick's videos on his channel. His, his channel is Spectre Creative. And he even talks about how during the 2002 uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe reboot cartoon and with that toy line, one of the things that tested most negatively at child test was the kids were like, why is he running around in furry shorts? Like, why is this dude half naked? It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit with the rest of the universe. Uh, and it, those are his exact words from his video. You can watch his video. And Scott Knightlick is the guy who was behind the 2002 reboot toy line. And he was also the guy behind Masters of the Universe classics, that toy line. And he, he says straight up in one of his videos, one of the things that tested most negatively with children was He-Man's look. You know, it looks weird. Uh, so, yeah. They tried a couple different things to rectify this. In season two of the show, uh, they tried to give him this new armor. Uh, it comes like almost like a skirt or a kilt. It's very armory. This is the toy version. This is from the cartoon. And it's better... But one, it was already a little too late into the show. The damage had already been done. And then also, two, uh, as much as He-Man needs some tweaking to his look, his look is pretty set. Like Most people are kind of like attached to it, and they don't really want it to change all that much. Like This is a drastic departure from He-Man's normal look. It was a little too much. So we're trying to find some like middle ground here. So another thing they did in the 2002 series was they tried to explain why he looks the way he looks through story. And this was the best one they did. They introduced an episode into this 2002 animated series where they told the story of He-Man's ancestor, King Grayskull. He was from ancient Eternia, back when it was barbarian tribes. You can see he's got like the fur cape and the fur loincloth, the fur boots. And he was a like barbarian tribal chieftain turned king and this is his outfit this is what he wore into battle on a day-to-day -day basis this was his look and when he-man raises the sword and says by the power of gray skull and transforms into he-man he is invoking the magical power of his ancestor and that's why he adopts the look of his ancestor it's similar to like when billy batson from dc comics shouts shazam he grows bigger and taller and more muscular and older, and this outfit just magically appears on him. Because this is the outfit. This is the outfit that's the champion of the gods in within DC Comics, and that's just what magically appears. So they kind of tried to go that route while giving it the explanation of it. He's not just drawing from some abstract power of Grayskull, because then the next question would be, all right, well, why does the power of Grayskull give him furry speedos? You know, it's not giving him furry speedos, it's giving him the look of his ancestor, King Grayskull. That being said, though, I still think that there is some tweaking that can be done. I found these two images here. from They're more modern images. Uh, this is the cover art for the DC Comics He-Man and the Masters of the Universe omnibus. And this is a just image of He-Man as he appears in the early story arc of that series from DC Comics. And I think these both look great. This one is definitely more his classic look. And this is definitely, it's been tweaked a little bit. The harness is a bit different. There's some chain mail hanging on the loincloth. But both of these, to me, don't strike me as like overly sexual in any way. This is just a cosmic science fantasy 
warrior imbued with mystical power who's here to save the universe. Like, I don't look at this and think, like, why are they trying to show off so much of this dude's naked body? It just, that's just his look. I think a lot of it has to do with the loincloth looking like a loincloth and not like furry speedos. I think that's the biggest thing. But other little design tweaks here and there, the different harness and whatnot. And also, a big thing is when his hair is chopped super evenly in that like page boy haircut, that looks weird. That's That shit's old and outdated. Let's just get away with that. Here it's like it's long, but it's unkempt. It's shaggy a little bit. Much better look for He-Man overall. So, moving forward with trying to do a He-Man comeback, you you just got to understand that like the classic look, while it is not bad per se, and it is a lot of fans' favorite, it's it's kind of just the set look for He-Man. It does need to be not tweaked, but there are certain things you got to do, and there are certain things you got to not do, and really it just comes down to you have to lean heavily into the the story of he's a cosmic science fantasy warrior here to save the universe from evil. And he adopts this look because it's the look of his ancestor, King Grayskull, who happened to be a barbarian from more, you know, primitive times. And that's why he looks the way he looks. The idea that spawned his look initially in the early eighties, which was let's just make him look super naked and masculine because that's cool this is the early 80s and that's cool well we're not in the early 80s anymore we're in the 2020s and that's not cool anymore a cosmic science fantasy barbarian warrior that can still be pretty cool but just showing off male muscular nudity for the sake of male muscular nudity because you think that's cool it's not i'm here to tell you it's not it's overly sexualized and Especially if you want this, like this whole pro- this property, Masters of the Universe, to take off and f- with kids again, you're gonna have to draw the attention away from the nude masculinity, the naked masculineness, and gear it more towards the story and him just looking cool as like this cosmic science fantasy barbarian character. So that's my two cents on that. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave some comments below. Give me some feedback. Check out some of my other videos if you'd like. Click the subscribe button, click the like button, and I will see you guys next time.